Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It's been a while since I brought the camera outside and I uh, just had a more of a philosophical discussion to have today. And so a uh, beautiful time to sit out here. And I think we should uh, maybe do that a little bit more. Um, but I want to talk today about uh, one of the things we talk about frequently. Uh, of course, Switch to Linux is not just about pure Linux. It's more about taking control of your life, taking control of your software, things like that. And one of the things that I've mentioned many times is you don't have to make the cold switch now. Start looking at the small places that you can switch to something that is free and open source and gives you full control. And one of the best places you can do that is inside of your office software. Um, and uh, I want to do this one because uh, just this week, the Open Document Foundation, which creates the open source standards for document files, released a uh, new uh, format, the ODF 1.4 release. and um, what the 1.4 release gives us is a lot more uh, compatibility on, uh, like one of the things they'd mentioned in there is um, uh, you can put tables inside of shapes instead of uh, just a straight text box. We're getting to the point, kind of like I mentioned uh, the other day, you know, where like Plasma's like, uh, hey, we can, we have rounded corners as a new feature because so many problems are solved. And the reality is, for 99.9% .9 of users, you can use an open source office suite rather than uh, the proprietary ones. And that's really where the article on its FOSS started out. Microsoft's proprietary formats like Doc and Docs X dominate office productivity landscapes. Most people and organizations rely on these formats for daily document work creating a predatory situation where vendor lock-in is the norm and compatibility issues are taken as omen that moving away from Microsoft Office is a bad idea. And the reality is there's not a lot of formatting issues moving away. Oftentimes where most of your formatting issues have traditionally been is if you've made the full switch all at once and Microsoft um, Office has a different suite of fonts than does Linux on LibreOffice. Now, of course, if you're installing LibreOffice on your Windows computer, you will have access to the same sort of fonts. But also you have the problem if you're on Microsoft, or excuse me, if you're on Linux and you create a document on Linux and then you email that to somebody running Windows, if they don't have the font you use, that will cause compatibility. Well, that will happen if you're using Microsoft Office and Microsoft Office if you create a document with a font that's different. Even the compatibility of that, though, has been more often addressed in, in latter years. But the point I want to make here is that your Office documents, uh, whether you're doing DocX, which LibreOffice can handle, or um, the ODTs for uh, LibreOffice defaults, no matter what, when you are using an open source office editor, you have control over your files. Don't forget right now, Microsoft is pushing out updates inside of the office ecosystem that instead of saving your files or even prompting to save your files on your computer somewhere, it automatically saves everything to the cloud, automatically. And in so doing, uh, of course, Microsoft wants you signed into the Microsoft account always. They want you to confirm everything always. And now they want all of your documents to be on their servers, which they have the capability of looking through those documents, whether that's just the file names or in some instances, even the content of those particular files. And that is a dangerous thing. Well, when you go back into LibreOffice or other open source Office document suites, LibreOffice, even only Office, and there's a bunch of other ones out there as well, you actually have a lot more control over your, uh, over your files. And so when you create a document there and you save the document, it goes onto your actual computer. Can you put it on the cloud? Absolutely. Can you work on the cloud? Yes, Calibora. Uh, now this kind of started out with um, kind of like LibreOffice, but the Calibora servers, I first started working with these when they were brand new. They were a royal pain to set up. I set it up with my first Nextcloud account, I don't know, like 
eight or so years ago. They were a little buggy and it required me to run an extra server because of how many resources it had. And, uh, and it was hard to set up and it took me a while to get it working and I ultimately did. I ran that server for about four years, but I don't do a ton of collaborative uh, online documents. So eventually I shut that server down. Now that application has gone so far into positive progression, it's actually easy. In fact, now the Nextcloud instance that I just switched over to from my old one that I've used for years has it all built in. I didn't have to do anything. I just clicked the Nextcloud all in one system and boom, I have an online Calabora document server, which means if I want to do collaborative or if I want to you edit documents on the internet or I want to share them over an internet type thing like a Google Docs or an Office 365, I have the capabilities but I still control the server and I still control and have easy access to all those documents without them automatically defaulting everything to save up there all the time. When I boot up my Linux computer and I open up my LibreOffice, it automatically saves documents where I want it to save them on my local computer. It does not put those automatically into the cloud. Now I have the capability of doing that. I don't do a lot of stuff there. I usually back up my, uh, my science fiction short stories. And of course, if uh, you are on my, um, uh, my supporters list on Patreon, Subscribestar or uh, Locals, then you know that you would download the audiobook copies of those from my servers, from my Nextcloud servers. Um, and that's all capabilities that I have, all in open source systems and all in servers I control without having big tech involved. So the point I want to make in this video is that even if you're on <clears throat> uh, Mac or on Windows and you're like, okay, I kind of want to start making these switches, I will highly encourage you to install LibreOffice, which you can get LibreOffice on the Apple Store, you can get it on the Windows Store, or you can just download it directly from it. And it is, you know, signed with all the proper certificates. So it's an official application on which one of those platforms you want to install it on. And I would encourage you to use that and start making that transition into that open source application. And that way you have one less program that if you like, okay, I got to make this switch. It's not a giant culture shock all at once. And you can run LibreOffice and Microsoft Office on your computer at the same time. You don't have to have one or the other. And LibreOffice is completely free. I would encourage you to download that, install it, and learn it and play with it. Now, one of the first things you will notice on LibreOffice Office, uh, not only Office, but LibreOffice, is that it has a layout more reminiscent of the old Office layout. I love that, so I never change that. A lot of people, though, since Microsoft Office went with that ribbon stuff years ago, everyone's so used to that. And uh, if you like that, you can set that inside of LibreOffice. Of course, uh, only Office does that by default. So if you want something that really looks a lot more like Microsoft Office, um, only Office does that by default. The problem is in all of my testing, Only Office is still much more limited in features as compared to LibreOffice. Can't search with regular expressions. There's a lot of uh, limitations, uh, particularly in, in the review areas. We found some limitations to that. There were some of those advanced Office features that many people may need that LibreOffice supports. I found Only Office didn't in my last tests, which admittedly were a few years ago at this point in time. But they are both applications that you could ex, uh, explore and play around with and have an, a free and open source option to look at these documents. That way you can do that and then maybe look at one more simple switch to say, okay, I got one more application. Maybe you get a little more confidence with the open source application so you really get a chance in this instance to to see that these open source soft, uh, software oftentimes is very good, if not in some ways superior to the originals. Now addressing the other issue, some people say, well, there's compatibility issues. You know what, For as I said, 99.99% .99 of people will not have any issues. If you're using the 0.1% echelon of super duper power users, you might run into a problem. But you know, we use Excel extensively in graduate school. We did a variations and all sorts of weird statistics, all sorts of 
things on all sorts of sheets. I have done budgets. I've done a lot of things. In fact, just last night I was working on using uh, Libre Calc to work on some more advanced uh, spreadsheets for uh, tax calculations. I want to, uh, you know, I want to check over all of the uh, tax. Uh, things that we're doing for the upcoming tax season. And so I'm working on some spreadsheets for doing that. And then I want to analyze a few different variables in there. I'm doing it all on LibreOffice and everything works just fine. I have all of those tax brackets programmed in. Of course, the uh, United States has these weird tax brackets uh, that do weird crappy stuff, depending on this money, this money, this money, this money, it's this much and all this kind of stuff. And I have it all calculated out. You put in that final income value and it will go through and it will tell you exactly what your tax burden will be uh, with the accounting, all these things. These are not simple features necessarily. In fact, I had to rack my brain a little bit to figure out how to get all that programming to work, but I did. Uh, and you can do it all on these applications. But all those things I did in grad school, all those things I did in college, which were pretty advanced stuff, of course, that was back in the you know, 90s, 2000s. Every one of those files I ever tried to open in LibreOffice opens just fine without any problems. All the formulas work, all the variables work, everything's fine. And the reality is, is that um, the people that tell you that, uh, that I have to do this for a special feature, more often than not, they're just lazy people that don't want to experiment with something new. They just want to stay in that vendor lock-in. They just don't want to think about anything. And these are the same people that are going to carry it away and do, well, I guess I'll pay Microsoft $200 a year for my subscription services then because there's no other choice. And no, you have a choice with free and open source software. And that's what I want to encourage you on today. So uh, have a look at uh, LibreOffice. Even if you've got to stick with Windows, you've got to stick with Mac for a while. If you're on the Office documents, download that. Maybe you play with that for a little while and go, dude, you know what? I can go ahead and create all those documents that I'm already doing for work and I can just save them in that docx format and email them to all my uh, all my colleagues and nobody even knows the difference that's how cool it actually is because i do it all the time i do it all the time I, I do a little bit of collaboration inside the writing world and uh as i was you know sending in manuscripts documents whatever else when i'm doing something like that i just go ahead and manually save them as the uh, microsoft office formats and ship them off to people that i'm pretty sure are using microsoft office and nobody's had a problem uh and it's that good so you should definitely check it out there's no problem in installing it on your computer having a look at it playing around with it and hey it might save you a subscription for next year so let me know your thoughts about all that in the comments down below.